Welcome to the Physics of Firearms. I'm Chris Bradford and I'm going to show you a few basic concepts of firearms and why they would relate to game design in general. Okay, here we have a basic diagram of a cutaway of a bullet. Um, we'll start at the top. At the top is the bullet itself. This is the projectile that's going to leave the weapon system. Below that is the crimp, which is basically just a tapered part of the case. Uh, the case is just that, a case. It contains all the components that are going to set our bullet in motion. Uh, below the case, and what does take up most of the space, is the powder. Uh, this is basically a big pile of potential energy. And our goal to get that bullet to move is to somehow turn that potential energy into kinetic energy. And how we do that is at the very bottom, in the middle of the rim, you see the primer. Now the primer is the catalyst that's going to set the entire chemical reaction off. Once our firing pin, which I'm going to show you in the next demonstration, makes contact with that primer, it pushes the primer into the powder and this is where the chemical reaction occurs. A small explosion is triggered and during that explosion gases are exerted which also exert force upon the bullet and pushes that bullet out of our weapon. Now Newton tells us if something is pushing that bullet, that bullet is also pushing us back, right? Well, this is where the recoil, or the kick, of a gun comes. As that bullet is being propelled out of our barrel, it's actually pushing just as much on the barrel as the gases are pushing on it. And this is where the gun is going to push itself back into your shoulder, leaving a bruise or not, depending on the gun and your own personal toughness. Next, we're going to go ahead and take apart my own personal firearm, and I could show you the chain of events that are going to happen in order to push the firing pin into the primer. This is the lower receiver. What this does, this houses the trigger group. When I pull the trigger, it's going to move these springs inside the receiver to hit this against the bolt to drive the bolt into the bullet to fire the weapon. By pulling the trigger, this is converting the potential energy that's inside of these springs into kinetic energy to move the piece and make it fire the bullet. This is the bolt carrier group. Now this is what's going to set the chemical reaction off that we discussed in the bullet cutout diagram. What this does is this is housed within the upper receiver when the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy and that trigger is pulled, it's going to go ahead and release this against the bullet that's loaded into the breech here. When this pin flies forth and hits the primer that we showed you in the last diagram, that's what's going to trigger the explosion and the chemical reaction that's going to put our bullet in motion. And here we have a standard ballistics diagram showing the basic behavior of our projectile after it leaves the weapon system. Now you'll notice on the top and the bottom diagrams the trajectory of the bullet is arced and this is because the Earth's gravitational pull is pulling our bullet down towards the ground the minute it's set in motion. At greater distances the further we move our target out from our weapon system and us, the higher we're going to have to aim to compensate for the Earth's gravitational pull. Now when you're shooting at somewhere between 50 and 100 yards, the bullet and the target are fairly close together and the bullet's travel time isn't going to be that great and conversely the gravitational pull of the Earth isn't going to have as much effect on it as say something at 300 yards. When we're at 300 yards the way we compensate for this is we're going to lift our barrel of our weapon up slightly higher than the point of aim and what that's going to do is being that it's higher and you're pointing it at that spot the bullet's actually going to drop a little bit and hit slightly below your point of aim and this is how we compensate for distance without having to change the amount of force that's pushing that bullet. Firearms have come a long way in video games. It's not 1987 anymore. We don't want the big red blob floating across the screen that we could follow with our eyes and see if we made contact with the target. Times have changed. Realism is a big deal now. Not just in context, but in how the gameplay systems interact with each other. Take a look at games from the battlefield, Arma, or even the Call of Duty franchise, and put their gunplay mechanics against another big franchise, say the more modern Fallout games. Now I'm a huge fan of the Fallout games, and a lot of people are, but I don't think really anyone is a huge fan because of the gunplay mechanics. Now Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Arma, 
they are a lot more realistic, and I think it gives a lot more sense of urgency and a better sense of accomplishment when you take a target down because you know that you took the target down and it wasn't a skill point or anything like that that made your bullet into a magic bullet that's going to hit your target. As the industry progresses further and further, I think developers and designers would do a great job if they were to continue to innovate and perfect the bullet physics systems that exist in current games. I think all in all it's going to provide for a much more engaging, immersive, and just plain fun experience. As we've seen with most games, the future is only going to make them better and better. And as history has showed us, the more emphasis that is placed on physics, the more immersive and realistic our games are.